I think the title of this song is Let the Rest of the World Go By. <laughs> Look at those villains over there. I tell you the truth, it's, it's a study. Hey, this is part of the main part of town. They're not gonna tear the town now. Many people have gone away, either retired from business or uh, passed on, or gone off to the shopping malls or other stores. We had no, no thoughts of moving. They're not satisfied, but they have no choice. And since they have no choice, uh, uh, they're victim of circumstances. Well, I think if they fix it over, it could be nice. It seems that they just don't care about here. It really seems that way. Where does the money come from, huh? There's no money anymore. Where does the money come from? What can they do? And what can they do, really? I wouldn't miss leaving here, but I would miss my friends. I'd rather try and make a living than stay here and drop dead slow. And really, a lot of other places are talking about falling down. You walk down the street, how many places are closed? They can't even rent the stores. Why? Why is empty stores around here? You look bad, yes, so. You look, you know, you don't look nice. The city, you don't look nice, you know, to make them look nice. The most you look nice, the most is better if you rent it. And whether you know it or not, the people that are sitting in City Hall, they're not concerned. I just want something to happen down here. I want something to happen. It's too far gone. It's beyond saving. This street used to be the heart of the city. And when they start building out, and up, it took a lot of the business away from South Norwalk. And nobody really never did look at South Norwalk. They never put any money into South Norwalk. I think it was a deliberate attempt really to probably let South Norwalk run down. Well, you go right down in South Norwalk, you get anything you want. I, the tailor down there used to make all of my clothes. A tailor shop used to be there. Where the theater used to be down there on Washington Street. Oh, yeah, I remember that hotel up there where the park is now. 
the high class joint, I guess, in town. Oh, it was pretty wild up there. And <laughs> Washington Street was such a main part of my life as a child that I, I've never you know, forgotten it or never gotten over it. And as I stand here and it's changed so, uh, and uh, that it, it's very hard to uh, explain my emotions. I, I'm sure that nobody looking at this little building, or this little store, can imagine what a wonderful store that my grandfather had here. But what happened, I don't know. Even though South Norwalk used to be the business and financial and maritime center for the whole area, since, oh, I suppose the Second World War, it started to decline drastically. You could get a job, and you, you, the excursions come in here every day, you know. You could hold out a factory, the rubber mill was working, the uh, hat factory or the, uh, whatever was working. I went to work when I was 14 years old, and I worked for four dollars a week, boxing courses. Then I finally got promoted. I was put upstairs making the trimmings for the courses. Well, we used to make some real fancy ones, satin ones, for wealthy people. We used to make some really beautiful courses. I guess I came around here somewhere in 1912. I was only a kid. I had no home. And Somebody asked me if I wanted to work, and when they told me they had grub and everything and place to sleep, I took it. I used to, a man could go in there and work all day and got tired, he went home, slept four hours, and come back and go to work again. So the boats used to run day and night. Nobody wore gloves. I can't remember anybody spending 10 cents or a nickel for a pair of gloves. Callous your hands up. All along here, these oyster shops all went. There used to be 15 or more. The, the big companies bought them, and they couldn't maintain it, you know? Didn't pay off. So nowadays, what the heck, we only got about three, I guess three or four in the oyster business in Connecticut all together. Uh, but it never died. The place never died. So what's here? People that make their livings here and people that live here. That makes the community viable. They didn't have a job out there, 20 year job. And only paying $3,000 an hour. Where you can get out of $3,000 an hour? You get a three-room apartment, it costs $385. And you got to pay a utility. What good is that? Is that any good? Not for me. It might be all right for y'all. No good for me. Like as y'all got the money, I don't have. See, so that won't be doing me no good. The stores don't mean no good. I ain't making the money to buy now. The restaurant ain't no good because I don't eat at a restaurant. get jobs here, and they don't revitalize, but they can get more factories and more something in to make money, a lot of places, a lot of stores are going to have to close because they won't have any, any money. And money is the key word. I got some old people 
I got Social Security. I got the welfare. And there's factories around here where I got some people that work in the factories. When they come in, I got the rules. If they don't abide by the rules, they're put right out. First, no junkies or dope pushers. Second, no hot plates by order of the Board of Health. Then the two most important rules. No visitors hanging around in any rooms at any time. That's the time the place gets robbed. And the last is no women in this place at any time, as I have all the whores on the corner. And that's just what I tell them. And I said, so if you don't like the rules, don't bother moving in here, because I'll throw you right out. And if I didn't have that dog, I got a 38. There's not a lot of room to play where it's safe to play. Not weird like you'll get hurt at. And your parents might won't be scared to let you go not too far away from your home. The people that live here uh, are no different from the people that live in other areas of Norwalk. They pay the same taxes. And they're entitled to the same kinds of services. In the 1960s, the federal government had a policy of urban renewal for the declining cities. And urban renewal involved demolition of old buildings, acres and acres of them. It was a total disaster. The urban renewal plan in South Norwalk included a large office building and a large parking lot. We lost 192 buildings. I thought the time had come for them to try the other approach, to use the resources that were in place. And even the agency members who were involved in the urban renewal at the time don't think it was a total success. I did not get involved until the land was cleared and turned over to me and ready for new construction. We did not tear any buildings down. Any buildings that were torn down were torn down by the redevelopment agency, not by me. Basically, you had a mixture of industry, housing, offices, retail. The old Mahakamo Hotel, which was a landmark, was, uh, was torn down where 50 Washington Street is now. You had everything from the old newspaper, which was the uh, Sentinel newspaper, uh, T.H. Kenny Insurance Company, various stores, housing. It was an active neighborhood. Redevelopment basically, in other words, scared a lot of people out of the area. Nobody knew what it was going to be. Uh, Major companies such as Tom McKeon, Miles Shoes, National Shoe Stores would not renew leases. So actually, in the hope of redevelopment, redevelopment also caused areas to go blight. These buildings represent an investment in terms of money, natural resources, and the labor of former generations. And I don't think you can toss that kind of thing out the window. very emotional. I came in, looked at the building, liked it, and I remember that I was born here and what South Norwalk was, and that's how I got the palace. What I'm trying to do here, and the people who have been helping me, is that it will be a people's theater. I am trying to open a theater. I mean, in basic language, we are here surviving. And even I had moved, lived in New York City, and I was lost one day. I was trying to take a shortcut going down the back roads and uh, end up on the thruway, and I ended up in South Norwalk and drove around, and uh, having seen the lofts in, in Soho, I thought, my goodness, I'm in a little tiny miniature New York City with manufacturing and everything, and saw, uh, as I drove around, a number of uh, empty lofts and uh, contacted my friends, and they all drove around and said, you're in South Norwalk. 
And we found that really this would be a mecca in terms of uh, utilizing the loft spaces. And uh, so we felt at that time, good, other artists can move right in here. And at that time, the rents were very low. No, I mean, no, I've got a lot of things going on right now, you know. Um, as far as the art show that goes on every year, you know, as far as um, the Oyster Festival, you know, there's a lot of things starting to happen to attract people, you know. And um, they should do more, you know, within that sense to, uh, you know, even the more, more people come in and develop more money into the city, you know. I guess it was about five years ago, there was an urban renewal plan to tear down this, this block of buildings and to offer it up for a parking lot. As I was working on my degree at the uh, School of Architecture at Columbia University, I would come down here quite often and it occurred to me that this cast iron front building really had rather an unusual quality to it. So I, on my own, I began to research how many other cast iron front buildings there are in Connecticut. And I have found six in all the state of Connecticut. The cast iron use here in South Norwalk is really extraordinary. Every building has some detailing that incorporates cast iron elements. And when you look at this entire block of buildings, on this side, across the street, around the corner, you realize there's a nucleus here of maybe 20 buildings that you're not going to find anywhere else in Fairfield County. Just prior to the election in 77, when I won, uh, the buildings were under contract to be demolished. And I think the contractor had scheduled it for about two weeks after the election. So when I won the election, I immediately went to the redevelopment agency and convinced them to uh, put off that contract. I think we canceled it. I don't know whether we did it legally or not, but at any rate, uh, the contractor was told to put away his wrecking ball and not come, and we were going to see what we could do with these buildings. There are enormous opportunities for development here, I think. There's no place else in this part of the state that has the architecture that we do, located right on the waterfront. And to me, I think that's a tremendous opportunity. The majority of the people in South Norwalk that I have talked to, especially the minority people, want those buildings to come down. And the people that really were fighting to keep those buildings up were the people from New Canaan, Westport, Row and Silvermine. They don't have to live around that, so they can afford to come and say, I can tell you people what's best for you, but I wouldn't like it in my backyard, but it's good because we really want that. We want to look at things like that. We want to remind ourselves of what Norwalk used to be. And I don't think the inner city people, poor people, really like to be reminded that they are in poverty all the time. They want to see really some changes. Yeah, tear them down, make new ones. Why? Because a lot of people are looking for apartments, and there ain't any. I think they should be torn down. Really. They talk about a facade, a lovely facade, fine. Take the facade down and make a park and display your facade so everybody would be able to see it. If you tear them down, they're going to be nothing but asphalt jungle. And on uh, the uh, godly site, because that would be the beer cans and the beer bottles, and it would be a heap, a dump. Because if they ever get torn down, that would nothing get back there, ever. That's my firm belief, that that would nothing ever get back there again. No, I think they should be standing, restored, you know, fixed up nice. Main thing I think it should be safe for us to come and shop, because this is what we need. We need this. We need uh, South Norwalk. Well, listen, why should you buy new places when you can remodel these places? What's the difference? What's the difference? All you have to do is spend a little money and remodel these places. It's the same thing. A house ain't but a house. A building ain't but a building. So what's the difference? It should, should be remodeled. Maybe somebody would come in, you know, some, bring some business in. We needed to create a forum for revitalization. We needed to organize the community and get them working together along with city government to develop common vision for the area and a strategy for how that would take place. We thought we needed to hire some neutral experts from out of town. If you tore all the buildings down and put up a Gimbel's or a, or a Macy's or something, there are several basic things. One, they'll never come here. And I don't care who quotes me on that. I think that's a very basic fact. There's not enough land, there's not enough parking, and the environment is not right. It's simple. 
the way to compete against um, Fairfield, Norwalk, <laughs> New Canaan, Stanford, is to create a unique environment. And something that you have that they do not have are two things. You've got a magnificent waterfront, and you've got magnificent buildings on Washington Street. Phase 1A consists of the entire Washington Street Historic District, both sides of Washington Street, that frontage on both sides of South Main Street to Haviland Street. The Maritime Center would involve the rehabilitation and adaptive use of the Norwalk Fabricators Complex to accommodate the Maritime Museum, Aquarium, Seaport, Historic Museum, totaling approximately 70,000 square feet. The total grand picture of all of these phases, which one would hope to have in place and achieve by 1990, total approximately $54 million of private investment and $13.1 million of public improvements of all kinds and sorts. When are they going to go to work on? I can't answer that question for you. I, I make recommendations. The first time, and I, I, and I made specific recommendations. And it will take you. you know, there's no way that any development, whether it be new construction or renovation, whether it's rural or urban, is going to take place by going from one day to another. And particularly in terms of South Norwalk, with some of the negative images of the past, uh, this thing has to be put in place well in order to make intelligent decisions and, and spend money intelligently where it's best spent. Well, I think you as a businessman recognize that. But the final analysis, you've got to have something which no one has been able to come up with to go ahead and spend the money and no one seems to want to do it. Uh, now, I realize that planning is a major part of getting any action started, but to spend $110,000 and to present to, to a community a series of watercolors for $110,000 is unrealistic. We don't buy it. And in none of this process has the community been included, basically. It's, it's normal that the community is very leery about whatever is being planned for it. You don't need a seaport, but the people who live in this area need something decent. South Norwalk belongs to everybody in town, not just the people who live there. If it doesn't belong to everybody in town, it's not going to work because we're the people who are going to go down there and shop, eat in the restaurants, go to the movies, and buy our books and supplies and uh, sporting equipment down there. What are you going to do with the rents when they go up? And they're going to go up. They're telling you right in the back of the book that they're going to go up. That's where they're going to get the money from. And if I were a landlord, and you increased my taxes, my property is worth a heck of a lot more than it's worth today. I'm going to increase the rent. You better take a good, close look at what you're going to do to people. That's all I'm telling you. I think that you will find, as you have stated, that in many areas, rents have gone up uh, in revitalization areas. However, the whole point of the Haviland Elizabeth Locke program is that it should provide a model program to prevent displacement and higher rents in lower income districts so that everybody can benefit from this plan. I feel that the, the property owners around here are victims of, of a little bit of press <laughs> and therefore they expect to get uh, rents, New York rents, for empty storefronts in South Norwalk. A lot of property owners think that because we have a plan and a program and something's going to happen, that they've created unrealistic values for their buildings. And that corset factory, for example, which was sold about a year and a half ago for $300,000, is now on the market for $1.9 million. We had a major housing developer who was interested in the building and thought, with unrealistic asking prices for the buildings, there is no development. You can't buy a building on that street. You, they think it's Fifth Avenue and 57th Street all of a sudden. The prices have gone, have skyrocketed. So I guess there are people that believe that this thing is going to take off. 
We felt South Norwalk does have a good future, and the design of this building would make it attractive for a lot of uses. What essentially do you plan to do with the building? We have no crystallized plans. That is, we're open to opportunities. We thought it was a particularly good buy. It's particularly attractive to people with an artistic background, uh, commercial photographers um, or painters, for example. Uh, I feel angry about the fact that uh, we have set up a lure here, in a sense, through, through our hard work, and that, uh, that the artists can no longer uh, afford, to, afford to stay here or remain here. Now, what one, some of the artists are doing, which I was thinking about today, is that they're moving into, uh, their, their way of con dealing with this is to move into lower, even lower rent areas. And what, I, what they are doing is to move around the corner to uh, some of the streets that, that are notably m far more dangerous. Our difficulty started when the building was sold to um, Ginny and Sulphur, trustee. There is no way at the present time to heat the building properly. And uh, unfortunately, many of the uh, pipes and things in the building are becoming completely unusable. It was a shack when I came here, and look, and, and they want it now. Everybody coming here, they get infatuated over it. One of the things that we're quite interested in doing is um, probably leaving stores on the first floor and hopefully uh, converting the upper two levels of the building for other purposes. It could be offices, it could be, um, oh, perhaps artist lofts or whatever. Whatever's conducive to making the area uh, giving it a, a, a feeling of um, artiness or what have you. That, that they want to rent a place to somebody else. I said, well, look, they haven't, haven't I paid my dues? Can I live in my own town since I, I pay a pretty good, you know, my uh, dues that I'm paying? I say, this is substantial. And I got to move off with somebody else? I, this is the way I feel about it. I want to get my hands on it. place oh, no oh, responsible. You see what I mean? Uh, look, I have to. They don't give. They don't. They don't give a rap about me. Another one. I mean, nobody is. There's such a housing shortage in Norwalk now that anything you convert to to uh, apartments can easily be rented. The question is whether all the same residents will be able to stay. I doubt that everybody could be kept, but I think the great majority can because many of them are eligible for various rent subsidies of one kind or another and the owners of the buildings are eligible for certain kind of subsidies. So we hope to minimize the number of people, individuals, who will have to leave, and we hope to increase the number of dwelling units beyond what's here today. If you spend a great deal of money on the redevelopment of buildings, and they obviously become high rental areas other than what they are at this time, who can afford to rent the renovated space after all that money is put into it. So right now, it, it's, it's like a catch-22. I was the first unit here, and as I stepped out, you know, we had the potential for a, a, a serious uh, life loss, number one, and number two, we had the potential for uh, a several building loss when we arrived. It's time to toast the rebirth of South Norwalk. What this groundbreaking is for today is to start on the street improvements. We're going to be replacing the sidewalks, the roadway, the street lights. That will be a very clear and visible sign to private investors and prospective tenants that 
We mean business here. Let him go! I think in about two minutes uptown, they're gonna know something's going on down here. They're headed for Wilton and New Canaan right now, it's been pointed out to me.